Do you want perfect fitting helmets every single time? Things that need to be super snug like Deadpool and cows like Wolverine? Let me help you do this super easy. What's going on? I'm Dylan from Saturday Morning Props where I teach how I do all my 3D printing and cosplays and things like that. You may have seen the original video where I showed how to do helmet sizing, but I wanted to make the math really easy for you and I wanted to show you how to do multiple part helmets and things like that. I still would get a few questions here and there and I want to solve all of your problems. And if you're looking for cool files to go print and size, the Deadpool, Wolverine, Spider-Mans, all of those things, go over to do3d.com and use code SMP20. That'll give you 20% off all of the files. So whatever the lowest price is, it knocks it down even lower. And if they're running a sale like 50% off or buy one, get one free, my code becomes that as well. So still use the code and you guys will get an awesome discount. Let's get into how to size these things. I use a free head file to size my helmets. I don't use an app for scanning or anything like that, just a free head file. I'll have it linked down in the description below, but it's Budwin's file over on Thingiverse. For me, I like to wear fitted hats. So I have a 7 1 4 hat, so head four works perfectly for me without having to do anything. If you don't have fitted hats though, I'm gonna show you how to get your own head size. I highly suggest a snapback or something like this where the hat is adjustable, not stretchy or anything like that, so that you can get a really good measurement of your head. The reason I recommend a hat is because if you measure around your head here, right? If I have this slightly forward or slightly down, your measurement is going to change all over the place. So I don't recommend you measuring your head, but you can, if you don't wanna get a hat or anything like that, you definitely can. But just know that you can be slightly off just by how you're measuring the circumference of your head. The head files are sized to a hat, so it's where the hat lies. And then with your hat, what you can do is you can take a phone cord and you can hold it in place and line it around the hat. And then at the end, you'll have a measurement of how long you need to do this. Yes, you can use a fabric measuring tape, but this is for everybody. I want you guys all to be able to do this and everybody has a phone cord at home. Now that you have your head measurement, we're gonna put that into a little equation. We're all gonna use head four. So download the head four file, don't worry about the others. So take your head size in inches, that might be 22, 23.5, whatever that number is, multiplied by 100, then divide it by 22.9. That's gonna give you a number. That's going to give you a percentage. If your head is smaller, say it's in the 22s, it's gonna be lower. If it's bigger, it's gonna give you a bigger percentage over 100. For example, 23.5 sized heads, that's gonna be 102.6%. For a 22 inch head, that's going to be 96.1%. Super simple. And then what you can do is take that head four and then scale that helmet X, Y, and Z to that percentage. Now you have your own head scan to use. And I know these aren't perfect. You may have a little bit puffier cheeks or anything like that. It's gonna get you there. And when we size the helmet, give yourself a little bit of allowance. I'm gonna use a program called 3D Builder, but you can do a lot of this in your slicer, whether it be Bamboo, Orca, Cura, whatever. But I like the program 3D Builder and I'm gonna show you why. So this is 3D Builder. What we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to new scene. This is a free app on Microsoft computers, things like that. Go to insert and we're going to add. What you're gonna do is you're gonna load an object in here. Let's choose a helmet that has multiple parts. So I'm gonna to go to DO3D. I'm gonna grab my Mark 46 helmet here. And so we have all of these parts, right? And that's what people get confused by. Well, just highlight all of these and we're gonna load them in. This may take just a little bit of time because these files are really high quality with a lot of polygons. So just let it load in here and give it a minute. All right, and so our file is loaded in here, but this looks like it's already in place even though it's made up of a bunch of little pieces. So let's import the model. And I have it in an X-ray view here and you're gonna see why. So if you go into the view, yours is gonna look like this where it's solid and everything like that. And if you look over here on the side, you can see all of the individual pieces. I like the x-ray view and we'll see why in a little bit, but first what we're gonna do is hit select all and then group. Now your helmet will work as one piece. So when we go to scale, you're gonna hit lock. So that's gonna scale everything together, change inches into percentage. And then now when we scale it, it's all gonna scale together. Instead of you having to line it all up and get all the pieces there, However, if the modeler for some reason exports their files all into separate pieces, and I've seen that a few times, then you're gonna have to just align them back up and then do the same thing, select all and group them together. So I can show you what that looks like as well. 
say yours looks something like this, where the modeler for some reason has it in some sort of crazy exploded view, just grab each piece individually, get them back into the position that they need to be here. So, and honestly, 3D Builder will snap it into place usually. So it's super simple about getting them aligned. But yeah, you're just gonna get them back into place in the ballpark works well enough for sure. But then we're gonna do the same thing and group them all together. So not a big deal if the modeler does it just slightly differently, everything's gonna be okay. Then hit select all and we're going to group. Perfect, now let's load in our head file. We're gonna hit insert, add, I actually have one right here. Awesome, and it's head four. This is the old head by there. You guys will have a, an updated file, but still the same thing. All right, so we have our head in here. If it has some weird number here, just deselect all and then select the head again, and that will change it to percentages of 100%. I had an issue where mine was a weird little number, but now let's put in a new number there. So say yours was 98.6%. Now everything XYZ is all scaled to 98.6% here. I know that this helmet is probably going to fit at 100% just because DO3D often does it around a 7 and 1 fourth here. But let's go ahead and rotate it. This looks crazy. We're going to go back over into moving these things. So I'm going to move the helmet back here and we're going to see how this looks. Let's try to rotate this. And this is why I like to use the X-ray view. So if you go into view and hit X-ray, whatever is selected will stay colored and then the thing that is not selected will be highlighted like this and it allows you to really be able to see different sizing. So let's rotate this to where it matches the angle there. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit, bring it forward to see where we are. And then let's get rid of the x-ray view. What might be helpful with this model is to do something like ungroup and delete the eyes out of it. Deselect all. We're gonna take the eyes and we're gonna delete those. Cool. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of the helmet pieces again and group them back in case I need to scale it there. But I can see the eyes look pretty good here. I really do think that this is going to fit juts fine, it gives it enough view. So again, let's let's go ahead and look at the x-ray view. So whatever we have selected, I'm gonna select the, he the head here. We've got good size there. We're not really clipping through anything. It could be a little bit big, um, but say you were motorizing it, then you would want to give yourself a little bit of room. I really do think that this gives you enough leeway. Um, one thing to not worry about so much is the ears. Ears are flexible. If they're clipping a little bit, you're gonna be okay. They're gonna bend in a little bit. Don't be so worried about, oh my gosh, they're they're just clipping through. That's gonna be fine. But don't also cut your ears off with helmets. So take that with some discretion and you guys will learn how to scale it a little bit as you practice this. But overall, from top of the head to the chin, we have a little bit of room, a little bit on the nose, a little bit of room back here if you needed a battery pack or things like that. This would be a great sized helmet and you can always pad a little bit if it feels just slightly too big, but you don't want it to look like a bobblehead. And if you look here, the sides of the ears, that looks fantastic. We barely have extra room on this thing. Let's do a helmet that needs to slip over. So I'm gonna go to DO3D and I'm gonna get their Mandalorian. So we're gonna go to the helmet file here, main helmet, and let's load in a Mandalorian. All right, let's rotate this so that way it doesn't look so weird here. All right, so let's rotate this back because the other helmet was in a different position here. And then let's see what we need to do to scale this thing. So let's change our head scale to something that will say bigger than the helmet that we have. So 98.6 is a little bit easier. If you have a smaller head, you can pad it, things like that. But let's make sure it doesn't fit. So let's do a 105% head, something like a 24 inches or something like that, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this over here and see if this fits. So let's click on the head. We're gonna deselect that. All right, that one looks like it's a little too tight. I mean, <laughs> it probably still would work, um, but you can see the nose is gonna be right up on the visor and things like that. And then we're gonna make sure, because this one has luckily a big opening here, but on a helmet like a Stormtrooper where the neck is there, it's gonna be a lot harder to pass through. But I would like the eyes to be a little bit more here instead of them being a little bit lower. And like I said, the nose is coming close. So unclick that. We're gonna click back onto our Mandalorian 
And honestly, we only probably need to scale it up like 3% here. That 3% I think is going to give us enough room to then go ahead and move this helmet up. And now look, our eyes are right in this level here. And then we probably have a little bit more room in the back. So we could probably move our head back just a tad. I think that would be really good. If you wanted a super snug fit on a Mandalorian, this is going to have zero issue clearing through the ear. So one thing that you can do is if you want to see if this is going to clip or not, you can lower it down. So let's back up. We're going to lower it down here and you can check and see are your ears going to clip. And this one has some cheeks, but your cheeks are going to be fine in there once we see this. So the ears are going to clear that fine. And again, the cheeks, they're close, but when it's in it, it's really not cutting through there. There's really not a big issue on that. There's a slight overlap there, but I don't think that's going to block the helmet at all. So now, like I said, we have a really good, our eyes are, are at a good view to really be at this visor. And so we now know that our Mandalorian needs to be 103% for a head that is 105%, right? So hopefully this helps with you guys being able to do multi-part helmets, getting everything loaded in, grouped together, or helmets that are single piece, but have a big opening. Now you can play around with this, see what you need to do, give yourself a little bit more room. And if you don't feel comfortable doing this tight of a gap, you know, definitely give yourself some room for padding. There, there's no problem with that. It's easier to scale up just a tad. Don't make it huge, but give yourself a little bit of room for some cushion, things like that. So where your nose doesn't feel like it's pressed against the visor. So hopefully that helps clear everything up. Multi-parts, being able to put things together and sizing it all together. Helmets that are slide on or helmets that have back plates and things like that. I hope the math is completely clear now and that all of the questions are done. I hope this was super helpful. I really try to give you guys all of the knowledge that I have to help you guys make the best prints and things like that. Catch another video after this. Like do helmets fit on the bamboo lab printers? As always, I love you guys. and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.